Hi friends, welcome back to our channel B2C, Beginner to Champion for Competitive Exams. Today we are here to discuss the weekly current affairs section of October 4th week, part 1. The first news we have is related to international current affair and the news is Indian origin Vaval Ram Kalawan elected as the president of Sicilies. Vaval Ram Kalawan has been elected as the new president of Sicilies and he is of Indian origin. Sicilies has elected the, an opposition candidate as president for the first time since 1977. He has defeated Danny Furey, who is the incumbent president. Sicily's capital is Victoria, currency is Sicily's rupee, and its continent is in Africa. Next international current affair is related to NATO. North Atlantic Treaty Organization and North Atlantic Treaty Organization plans to set up a new space center in Germany's Ramstein. The headquarters of NATO is Belgium, Brussels and NATO's chairman is Air Chief Marshal Stuart Peach. NATO is a uh, organization of 30 member countries and it was founded in 4th April 1949. In the first current affair, we had discussed a current affair related to election of a president in Sicilies and here in this news, we come to a presidential election that took place in Guinea. Alpha Conde won the third term as the president of Guinea. Alpha Conde, the in incumbent president of Guinea and leader of rally of the Guinean party or RPG party has won the election against Celio Dalin Diallo with 59.4 percentage votes. The Prime Minister of Guinea is Ibrahim Kasori Fafana and the capital is Conakry. The currency of Guinea is Guinea Franc. We have one more news related to a presidential election and it is happened it has happened in Bolivia. The news is Luis Arque elected as the president of Bolivia. He has succeeded Jean Anes and the capital of Bolivia is La Paz. Currency is Boliviano. With this, we come to the conclusion of international current affair and we move on to our national affairs. The first national affairs is the launch of e Dharti Geo portal by Union Minister for Housing and Urban Affairs Hardeep Singh Puri. The e Dharti Geo portal will integrate legacy drawings such as maps and lease plans and ensure a management info information system and make its geographical information system enabled for citizens. The point to be noted here is the Union Minister for Housing and Urban Affairs is Hardeep Singh Puri and he is also in charge of Union Minister for Civil Aviation. The next news is related to the, the observation of Vigilance Awareness Week. The Vigilance Awareness Week will be observed from 27th October to 2nd November 2020. Every year, the Central Vigilance Commission observes Vigilance Week in memory of the first Home Minister of India, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, as his birthday falls on 31st October. The theme for 2020 Vigilance Week is Satrak Bharat Samrit Bharat which means Vigilant India, Prosperous India. Few information to be noted in addition here is the Chief Vigilance Commissioner is Sanjay Kotari and the Central Vigilance Commissioner Commissionerate was formed in February 1964. Headquarters is in New Delhi. The Vigilance Commission uh, comes under the Union Ministry of Home Affairs and the Union Minister of Home Affairs is Amit Shah.
here we move on to the next current affairs which is related to uh, news of personal public grievance pen- and pensions ministry of union government the news is union minister granted male employees child care leave union minister of state for personal public grievances and pension granted male employees of government sector for child care leave or ccl and it will be available for those male employees with uh, who will ha- who happens to be a single male parent ccl can be granted at 100% of leave salary for the first 365 days and 80% of leave salary for next 365 days so in all 2 years point to be noted here is the union minister for public grievance personal and pension is the prime minister himself and the prime minister is mr narendra modi but the union minister of state for personal public grievance and pensions is jitendra singh next is related to the tribal ministry the union minister for tribal affairs arjun munda has signed an mou with the art of living foundation to launch two center of excellence for tribal welfare the union minister has will launch two center of excellence initiative for tribal welfare first one for strengthening pris which means panchayati raj institution which will be launched in five districts in jharkhand other center of excellence is for training 10000 tribal farmers in aurangabad district of maharashtra on sustainable natural farming based on go andherit farming techniques the union minister for tribal affairs is arjun munda the chief minister of jharkhand is hemant soren and the governor is draupati murmu the chief minister of maharashtra is uddhav thakre and the governor is bhagat singh koshyari next important national affairs is related to a diplomatic conference held between india and us external affairs minister s j shankar and defense minister of india rajnath singh held third edition of 2 plus 2 dialogue with us secretary of state mike pompeo and secretary of defense mark esper the two nations signed the Lar- landmark defense pact the basic exchange and cooperation agreement which enables the militaries of two countries to share geospatial informations point to be noted here is us secretary of state is mike pompeo and secretary of defense is mark esper the external affairs minister of india is s jayshankar defense minister is rajnath singh the next news is related to indian army Indian Army celebrated 74th Infantry Day in Jammu and Kashmir on October 27th. The corps The corps in Jammu and Kashmir is known by the nickname Chinar Corps. GK to be noted here is 28th Chief of Army Staff is General M N Narawane and he has taken his office since December 31st 2019. The first chief of Indian Army is Field Marshal K M Kariyappa and is a is a five star general. The next news is related to shipping ministry. The Union Minister of State for Shipping Mansukh Mandavia has inaugurated direct port entry facility of V O Chidamban Chidambanar Port Trust in Tamil Nadu. The facility is created under the Sagar Mala project of the Union Government. Now we come to state news. The only state news we have in this part of the fourth week is Haryana tops anemia mukt bharat index in the country. Haryana state has topped the anemia mukt bharat index with 46.7% 7 in the index marks among 29 states in the country 
The Anemia Book Bharat is an initiative of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and UNICEF. Point to be noted here is Haryana Government. Haryana's capital is Chandigarh. Haryana Governor is Satyadev Narayan Arya and Chief Minister is Manohar Lal Khattar. The Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare is Dr. Harsha Vardhan. From the state news, we move on to an appointment. The Federation of Indian Fantasy Sports has appointed Bhimal Julka as the chairman. Bhimal Julka will be taking over from John Lofhan, who will assume the role of strategic advisor. Bhimal Julka, IAS, was the former Chief Information Commissioner of India. His appointment to the Federation of Indian, Emb- Indian Fantasy Sports came as he retired in October 2020. Next is an agreements and MOU section. The first and the only news here is IIT Jodhpur, Indian Institute of Technology Jodhpur, situated in Rajasthan, has signed an MOU with the National Highway Authority for betterment of highway infrastructure through technology advancement in building roadways. Indian Institute of Technology and National Highway Authority has signed a memorandum of understanding to share expertise for betterment of highway infrastructure. National Highway Authority of India's chairman is Sukhbir Singh Sadhu. Headquarters is in New Delhi. The Indian Institute of Technology Jodhpur chairman is R. Chidambaram and Indian Institute of Technology Jodhpur is situated in Jodhpur, Rajasthan. Next we come to Banking and Finance. RBI, the Reserve Bank of India has barred payment system operators from launching any new property QR which means quick response code for payment transactions. Currently, there are two QR codes used by UPI, Unified Payment Interface and Bharat QR and RBI has barred payment system operators from launching new QR code for payment transactions. The decision of RBA came after a report by a committee of RBA headed by the chairman of the committee Deepak Patak. Points to be noted here is 25th RBA governor is Shakti Kanta Das. Deputy governors of RBA are BP Kanoga, MK Jain, MD Patra and Rajeshwar Rao. Headquarters of RBA Reserve Bank of India is Mumbai Maharashtra. We move on to science and technology. AIM or Atal Innovation Mission and the CSIRO launches India Australia Circular Economy Hackathon. The Atal Innovation Mission, in collaboration with CSIRO, is organizing a two day hackathon titled India Australia Circular Economy Hackathon IAS on 7th uh, and 8th October, December to boost circular innovation economy in India and Australia. The theme is innovation in packing, reducing packing wastage, innovation in food supply chains, avoiding wastage, creating opportunities for plastic waste reduction and recycling, critical energy, metals and e-waste. Point to be noted here is Prime Minister of Australia is Scott Morrison and capital of Australia is Canberra. We come to summits and conferences. There are a couple of summits and conferences that happened in the first part of October 4th week and the first one is Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates 4th India Energy Forum. PM Modi has addressed the inaugural session of 4th India Energy Forum through video conferences interacting with chiefs of leading global oil and gas companies. The summit has been organized by Niti Aayog and Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. The theme for the fourth energy forum was India Energy Future in a World of Change. The Union Minister for Power and Electricity is R.K. Singh and the Union Minister for Petroleum and Natural Gas is Dharmendra Pradhan. Niti Aayog is National Institute for Transforming India and its CEO is Amitabh Kant, Vice Chairman is Rajiv Kumar and the Chairman is the Prime Minister himself. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Next is an international conference related to BRICS. Sixth edition of BRICS Parliamentary Forum held in virtual format. The organization comprising of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa held its sixth parliamentary forum organized virtually under the chairmanship of Vyashalsav Volodin, chairman of Russian parliament and Indian delegation was led by Lok Sabha speaker Om Birla. The theme was BRICS partnership in interest of global stability, general safety and innovative growth parliamentary dimension. Next we have is a miscellaneous news. Samsung which is Korea's largest, South Korea's largest con electronic conglomerate, has topped the list of world's best employer 2020 published by the for famous Forbes magazine. Amazon, IBM, Microsoft and LG are among the top 5 in the list respectively. From India, HCL Technologies is the top industry in the list and it is placed in the 30th position globally. In the banking se sector, HDFC is top from India and it is at 176th position. Government of India sets up committee to commemorate 400th anniversary of Guru Tej Bahadur. Center has set up a high-level committee headed by the Prime Minister himself, Narendra Modi, to commemorate the 400th birth anniversary of Sri Guru Tej Bahadur. The Union Min Home Secretary Ajay Kumar Balla will be the member secretary of the 70-member high-level committee. We have some news related to arts and culture. The first one is Ministry of Tourism has organized a web based seminar or webinar on Deko Apna Desh on Bandi Rajasthan. The Ministry of Tour Tourism organizes webinar on Bandi, architectural heritage of a foreign architectural heritage of a forgotten Rajput capital under the Deko Web Apna Desh webinar series. Bandi is a district in Hadoti region of southeastern Rajasthan known as the city of steppe walls and blue city. It is also known as Choti Kaashi due to the presence of large number of temples in and around the Hada capital. Deko Apna Desh webinar series is an effort to showcase India's rich diversity under Ek Bharat, Shresht Bharat project of the Union Government. Point to be noted here is Union Minister for Culture is Prahlad Singh Patel. Next is a launch by President, Vice President M. Vengai Naidu. Vice President M. Vengai Naidu launches Parampara Series 2020 National Field Festival of Music and Dance. Vice President M. Vengai Naidu has launched Parampara Series 2020 National Festival of Music and Dance, focusing on music dance that can provide relief from the anxiety during COVID-19. The festival was organized by Natya Tarangini in partnership with United Nations. Next is the Films Division of Information and Broadcasting Ministry organizes concluding part of Nirtyanjali. The Film Division of Ministry of Information and Broadcasting has organized concluding part of Nrityanjali from 28 to 38, 30 October 2020. Nrityanjali is an online festival of documentary films on the life and work of some of the leading Indian classical dance exponents. Point to be noted here is Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting is Pragas Javedkar. Here we come to the last important current affair in this session and it is related to important days. The World Day for Audiovisual Heritage was observed by UNESCO on 27th October. The day is being observed by the United Nations to raise awareness of significance and preservation of recorded sound and audiovisual documents. Theme for 2020 World Audiovisual Day is 
your window to the world. UNESCO headquarters is in Paris, France and UNESCO head is Audrey Azoulay. UNESCO was founded in 16th November 1945. With this we come to the conclusion of current affairs section of October 4th week part 1. Stay tuned for the next session. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and share. Subscribe to this channel to receive expert tips and guidance for clearing various placement exams and press the bell icon to receive instant notifications.